if if I'm gonna take my pick, I hope it doesn't bite me in the butt when I say this. But for sure, I'm gonna take Monaco first. Barca, Ooh. Madrid. Ooh. I, I really can't. Why, why do you take Monaco over Olympiacos? Let's start from this uh, from this uh, semifinal matchup because okay. it's, I would say it's the most exciting one. Knowing the fan bases, uh, I mean, knowing the fan base of Olympiacos, mm -hmm. I would say. But knowing all this hype, all the expectation, the first seed, uh, Euroleague team. You know, after getting all those good lessons from the last year, it felt like they were ready to get the job done this year. But why do you see Monaco uh, putting uh, uh, like Olympiacos fans Like I this? said, you got three guys that can get 30. And you got, for sure, one guy that's a willing passer that cre creates so much attention and is a willing passer and can give you 30. On the other side... Who's your go-to score? Who's going to go create his own shot? And I mean create. They don't have Another that. Team. They don't have We that. had this discussion with Eric before the pod. I mean, Slukas. They, probably. I, think, I think their best well, one-on-one player. Slukas is good off a screen and roll. Yeah, if but, you switch, you can isolate that. I think the best one-on-one -on -one guy is Shaq McKissick. And that's because he's the he's just so quick. And once he gains speed, like it's hard to stay in front of him. But at the same time, you play off. Maybe he makes a shot, maybe he does. Yeah. You really don't know. But who on that team can really say, hey, give me the ball. I'm about to go get a bucket. They don't have that. Yeah, so that's that's kind of why I say Monaco over them. Even though they're a great team, they have great principles. If you watch them, they're always on the same page defensively. You never see them miss an assignment defensively. But it just worries me on the offensive end on how they would do in a game like that. Yeah, um, we spoke about this earlier in the podcast. I think the problem is, like you said, they don't have that go-to score. They have a really good team offense. They have good ball movement. But as we saw in the playoffs in the series against Finner, athleticism, length, and size can kind of take away from that ball movement. And yeah. Monaco doesn't have the size that Finner has, but they have the athleticism. They have yes. the speed. They have that. So, like, that could create some issues. And then another thing is so Lucas has the play for their offensive flow, for the movement. But then Thomas Walkup has the play for the defense on Mike James or on yeah. Okobo. So it's like you lose something. If you go with Lucas, you lose defense. Mike James will have his way or Diallo will have a, a mismatch with a smaller player on them and maybe something you can exploit with him attacking the paint. Or even Okobo or Jordan Lloyd, very good scores. So you know, who's he going to guard? Um, but you need his offense because he's kind of the orchestra of everything. He yeah. makes everything flow. But then if you go Thomas Walker, the offense kind of becomes stagnant. They don't have that pick and roll game. They don't have that ball movement, but then they're better defensively. The problem is they have a lineup that can be good on defense or a lineup that can be good on offense, but cannot be both. And I think Monaco has the pieces to do both. And with yeah. the history of last year's matchup, we've seen it going back and forth. If it wasn't for home court, you know, maybe Monaco wins that series. Now we're on a neutral site. We're going to see what happens. Um, I do believe Olympiacos is the most complete team. But as we know in the playoffs, it's about matchups. And I feel like yeah. Monaco is not a great matchup for them. 